All right, what's up? I'm going to tell you exactly how I catch bass at Castaic. Um, a lot of people ask exactly what is the setup I'm using. They'll go out, they'll catch one or two fish, uh, and in the videos it looks like I'm catching 10 to 20 fish a day, which I usually am. So uh, the key, before I get into all the gear, for me has been uh, just spending long days out there. Uh, ever since last March of last year, uh, when I went out there and started catching spawning bass, I have been uh, hooked on uh, Castaic and learning the lake, learning the locations, the conditions, the patterns of the fish, everything for, to get a pretty consistent year-long bite. And I did pretty well ever since March. I don't think I came back skunked except maybe one day where I fished from shore where access is limited and you're getting snagged a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you for the length of days is very important. Uh, I mean, I spent a long time out there. You know, the first four or five hours of the day are really great and the last like three or four are really great. And then there's usually a slump in the middle. But I end up catching a lot of fish and a lot of it is learning the lake, learning the spots, uh, and also learning a couple different techniques. It, none of them are a secret. Uh, none of this is a secret. I mean, everyone uses basically the same things there. You can either use soft plastics, you can use uh, cranks and uh, twitch baits, uh, top water, things like flies, things like that. But I like to use the things that uh, are more consistent with the most fish. Uh, they may not always get you the biggest fish, but you'll always catch fish. So uh, my go-to uh, bait for the bulk of the year uh, and I'll know when the season changes and it's time to switch it up which is probably in another couple months here so it still should be good but my go-to bait is the Gary Yamamoto Senko it should be everybody's go-to bait pretty much everywhere because the Senko catches fish I am partial to the green pumpkin black flake 5 inch uh, 4 inch works too um, watermelon black flake works too so does the red flake. Uh, I've used every shade of green there is and caught fish. I've used every type of red flake now and caught fish. It just depends on the one that you're the most comfortable with. Um, all the colors catch fish and, and I see different guys using different colors and they always catch fish. So just throw different colored Sankos, four or five inch, uh, and see what happens. Um, and you know, see which one you're comfortable with. Now the hook, that I, I use almost every time is a one-sized um, Gamagatsu wide gap finesse hook, just like that. This color or the red, either one works fine. And then what I do is I wacky rig it. I don't use any weight. So what I do is, <clears throat> and I just got turned on to these things and it is an amazing tool. Uh, you can buy these off of Amazon and what it does is it helps you put on these little rubber rings anywhere, wherever you want to uh, hook the bait. I would like to put mine right here, uh, a little bit off center. Hook the bait through like this, and there you go. You got a wacky rigged Sanko. Um, and the reason this little loop is so great is it helps save so many of these Sankos. They're expensive. They're roughly a dollar a piece, and you want to save as many as possible. If you're getting bit a lot or you're catching a lot of fish, these things get tore up, ripped off, all the stuff. But with this little thing, the bass gets it, you set the hook, boom, the hook goes in the fish, and this thing stays up on the fishing line. Uh, so it's a great tool. So I suggest everyone get one of those. Get them off of Amazon. All right, so I use the Senko. I use it on uh, medium rods. Um, and I use, right now I'm using eight pound test. When the water's a little bit clearer, uh, and in the winter time, I may go back down to six pound test. Um, but right now, I got eight pound uh, Berkeley Invisalign or something like that, fluorocarbon. Uh, and it works just fine, especially wacky rigging it. So, I have a, this is a, like I said, a medium rod, six, six or seven foot, let's see here. Seven foot, uh, medium light. And I've got a 2500 Shimano uh, Sienna reel. Very great reel. Um, it's, it's only $30. Uh, and it's fantastic. It's very smooth. Uh, it works well, um, and that's it. It holds a decent amount of line on it. So that is the setup. Seven foot, eight pound, 2,500. A 3,000 uh, reel works as well. Uh, let's see. On this one, it's, uh, it's I think it's more of a medium 
heavy. No, it's medium light as well, but this is a seven foot nine. And this is a Shimano Sedona 2500. And that works, that works well. <clears throat> I used to have braid on there and I would just put like a 10, roughly six to 10 foot liter so they can't see the braid. I think the braid is fine now because the water is so green and murky that you're okay. Um, but I just kind of like the stretch of the, the floor right now. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That is my go-to setup. Uh, I'll cast to the places where you think you, there's going to be fish, uh, steep uh, drop-offs, um, uh, corners, edges, cliffs, points, trees, any kind of structure. Uh, I'll cast it out there, let it sink, give it about a 10 count. Uh, and then maybe an extra 10 count if you're not getting bites doing that. Usually they'll hit it on the way down or as soon as it hits. If you're not getting that bite, just let it stay a little bit longer. You know, just let it dead stick it. Let it stay on the bottom. Maybe every once in a while, give it, get a little twitch. Uh, and then after you do that and, and you're thorough in a section and you're not getting hits, move on to the next one. Uh, I found that, you know, I'll spend an hour or so in one place not getting any bites, thinking I'm, I'm doing something wrong, move on to the next spot and start catching fish. So be thorough but also move along to the next spot. Uh, and again, spending time on the water, like everyone has said, is a good way of just getting to know the lake and where the fish are gonna hole up at any given point. Um, my number two that I like to use, I'm not fond of the drop shot at Castaic because there are so many snags, but it is a very effective way to fish, uh, especially if it's a little windy and the boat is drifting, you can just let that thing drift. So what I do for the drop shot is, uh, again, the same, the same line, eight pound test. I like to have a, a couple, maybe a foot, foot and a half of, uh, you know, uh, space between the weight and the hook. Uh, and then I use these tiny little mosquito hooks, uh, size four or size six. Uh, and then you, you can look online to figure out how to do a drop shot and knot and everything and get the hook where you want it to get. And then I just use a little, uh, weight like this tiny little weight for my weight because you're gonna go through these things this is enough weight to get it where you want it to go you're gonna get through a ton of these and it's only like a dollar for a pack of them uh, because Castaic you know tons of snags and <clears throat> the worms I like to use of course are the robo worms my go-to color is the morning dawn doesn't really matter the size you know I've used all sorts of sizes uh, but this one is really effective. If they're not hitting it, I'll switch to something a little bit more uh, earthy looking, you know, like the brown. I think this is the, uh, uh, I don't remember which one this is, blood flake or ox blood flake or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> this one is good. The light uh, version of this one is also good. But I've caught them on all sorts of colors. I've caught them on this uh, shad color. Um, I've caught them on the margarita color. Uh, but Morning Dawn is my go-to, uh, and the Ox Blood uh, is my number two for that. And for the drop shot, it is a pain in the butt because of all the snags. If you can sort of position the boat uh, just outside of where the tree line is underwater, and just kind of slowly pull it along there, every once in a while giving it a little twitch, you'll get a ton of strikes, or any of the steep drop-offs as well, just right at the bottom there, right after all the snags and you tend to get a bunch of hits. Those are my go-to baits at Castaic. If you throw that, you will catch bass. Again, the key is where you're at. If you're gonna fish from shore, it's gonna be tougher. The, the, sh the shorelines where you're able to fish are highly pressured. They're seeing the same stuff over and over, and there's a ton of snags, so you're not able to keep your bait in the water that long. But if you're in a boat, you will catch them with these two techniques. Uh, the other things that I like to use that have been effective both a Castaic and a Casitas is the Kitech. It's like the, the three and a half uh, shad version. Uh, and I just will put this on a little tiny mosquito hook, just nose hook it. Uh, or <clears throat> actually it's really effective with the drop shot, especially where the shad are already up. I, I caught a couple nice fish at Casitas uh, about a month ago when the shad were up a little earlier than they are at Castaic, just drop shotting this thing and just dragging it along uh, under the boat uh, and it was it worked really well uh, and I've caught a few with little jig heads at Castaic but since the shad bite is just now getting there 
this bite is going to be good for this uh, bait is going to be good for the fall and the winter when the shad are up or the fall especially. Uh, right now the shad are very tiny, so you, in my experience, you want to mimic the size of the bait and what they're looking at. So I will throw these tiny little tube baits, different colors. I like the sort of pearl color. Uh, but these are all effective. I've thrown the red and white ones in caught bass, uh, Balboa. It's very easy to catch them on that. Um, but a Castaic, you want to mimic what they're looking at. And right now, most of the shad are really small. I caught some decent sized shad, uh, but there's not a lot of them. Um, but that is what the bass are feeding on right now. I'm watching them feed on these things. Uh, I'm watching them just go up and gobble uh, little schools, mouthfuls of these things. Uh, and they're just hanging around them. So I've also found in my last video, you find a bunch of bait and it's very plentiful right now you find a bunch of bait hanging out somewhere just throw a senko into it and or a robo worm wacky rigged and you'll catch these fish uh, because they're hanging around these schools of shad so very soon it's going to be time to start mimicking the shad uh, and there's all kinds of different ways to do that and in maybe another few weeks or a month i'll do another video about mimicking the shad uh, with artificials and uh, things like that and then we'll go with that but if you use these setups like I said six and a half seven foot rod medium light action 2500 size reel to 3000 works with very light line like I said six to eight pound uh, fluoro is what I prefer uh, and then the size hook size one you will catch fish. I'll use the mosquito hook sometimes uh, to wacky rig too if I run out of those. Uh, and then and use the Senko and you will catch fish. That's it. Very simple. But the key is to move around, hit the spots where you know they're going to be, in the shade, around structure, points, drop-offs, and you'll catch bass at Castaic. All right, that's it. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you tomorrow.